Hi everybody, welcome to Art as a Form of Equitable Climate Action. My name is Kim and this is Maddie and we're both fellows with Art Climate. We're excited to be here today to talk a little bit about what art activism is, how it can be utilized, and how equity plays a role in facilitating action. At the end of this presentation, we'll dive into our own experience with Art Climate building a 30-foot Mantee mosaic on the steps of the Florida Capitol, and then we'll close with some next steps. We hope that by the end of this presentation, you'll leave with a stronger understanding of how you can utilize art as a mechanism to spur action within your own communities. But before we get started, I'll pass it over to Maddie for a brief overview of our organization. Thanks, Kim. Our Climate is a national organization that works to mobilize and empower young people to educate the public and elected officials about science-based equitable climate policy solutions. We have field teams in five different states, including New York, Florida, Massachusetts, Oregon, and Washington. Our Florida team is proud to fight for and build the relationships that will win science-based equitable policy in our home state and as many cities that are seeing the effects of climate change. Fellows, field representatives, and field advisors work to hold the Florida legislature and members of Congress accountable for adapting to the current effects, but also mitigating future effects and protecting frontline communities that are disproportionately affected by the climate crisis. As fellows, we support and spearhead campaigns, strengthen our project management skills, and collaborate with various coalitions around the state. Over the past eight months, as fellows, we've lobbied, text banked, and spoken on the importance of intersectionality within the climate movement. We're incredibly fortunate to be a part of this organization, and we're always looking for more people to join our team. So at the end of the presentation, we'll discuss ways that you can get involved. But for now, let's jump back into art as a form of equitable climate action. All right, so coming into this presentation, you all probably had a decent idea of how art can facilitate climate action, but I'm willing to bet that many of you don't actually know the definition of art activism. So I briefly wanna go over what art activism is and what its purpose is. So activist art, according to the Tate Museum in the UK, is a term used to describe art that is grounded in the act of doing and addresses political or social issues. But just like art, the term act art activism or activist art is somewhat subjective. In fact, the Center for Artistic Activism describes art activism as a dynamic practice combining the creative power of the arts to move us emotionally with the strategic planning of activism necessary to bring about social change. So although each definition is somewhat different, both relay a similar message. So when we ask ourselves, what is our activism? We wanna think of it as a way to connect with the artists inside of every activist and the activists inside of every art artist. And art activism allows us to redraw connections and reintegrate and re-energize our lives. So it's a great way to bring about and call attention to social change by highlighting our emotional responses. And to demonstrate this, um, let's look at a quick example. So what you see right here is a work that is based in Florida and was spearheaded by the Clio Institute and the Volo Foundation. Together, along with Zuby, a Miami ad agency and an artist um, named Bob Partington, they utilized art as a medium to demonstrate how quickly rising temperatures are affecting Florida and its wildlife. They decided to commission a series of wax sculptures that would melt in the Florida heat over the span of four to five days. And the sculptures shown on this slide, which is the second out of three total wax sculptures in this series, depicts a Florida panther, mother, and cub. And um, in fall 2020, it was unveiled at Zoo Tampa, and it artfully demonstrates how extreme heat and other effects of the climate crisis like rising seas are a threat to their very existence. And ultimately it serves as an artistic metaphor for the toll human um, caused climate change is taking on Florida's wildlife and people. So ultimately this series was executed in conjunction with the Clio Institute's Florida climate crisis campaign and effectively highlighted the importance of addressing these threats across the state and seeking equitable climate solutions. Um, so it's clear that our activism does have a unique power to move people emotionally and drive social change. Um, but I guess that begs the question, how does it compare to regular activism? So as we know, there are tons of ways to be activists, but what is the difference between art activism and regular activism? 
Activism is a multifaceted practice, but the common element that relates all forms is that it's an activity targeted towards a discernible end. The difference when it comes to art is that it tends not to have as clear of a target. Because art can have different meanings due to an individual's perception, its value lies in providing a new perspective and new ways that we can envision the world that we live in. Art activism tends to lead a deeper, to a deeper processing and studying in order to understand its meaning. So within art activism, there's many different categories and mediums that you can participate in, but this is something we're gonna to touch on a bit later. Here's another take on the personal impact of art and art activism. The significance of identity becomes as important as the work, uh, not how it reflects physically in the way that we make art, but the perspective from which we come. Hi, I'm Sanas Mazinani, and we're here today in my studio. I came into the arts from a background where I was very interested and engaged in political activism and social justice causes. The work that I make takes images from, for example, the internet, online sources such as Google searches, uh, Facebook, or news media sites that are really popular and deal with issues around war and conflict. And then I look at those pictures and kind of evaluate them and think about them and rejuxtapose them and make collages, kaleidoscopic, visual uh, kind of images that come together that speak about these issues. So what I bring to each and every project is this kind of questioning about what is the world like today and how there might be a potential for growth or change. The project that we're working on here today is called The Threshold, and it includes 12 wall panels, um, all mirrored, and a large 8x8 eight eight sculpture that's going to be in the center of the room, surrounded by the mirrored panels. The sculpture itself is going to have the same surface, and the holes are going to allow you to see through the piece while simultaneously you're being reflected on the piece. So the patterns that are used in the mirrors are all uh, inspired from my own personal heritage. I was born in Iran and really inspired by the Islamic ornamentation that persists there, and the kind of centerpiece of the whole installation is going to be this four panels of video will be against the back wall. They're actually uh, clips taken from 11 different Hollywood movies uh, where I pulled the explosion parts and they kind of follow one another, one after another. And I was really interested in this kind of the power, the pull of the sublime and the darkness of this kind of destructive force that we as humans kind of might relate to and i want to place it in the center of the space so that when you are walking through you're seeing yourself reflected but simultaneously seeing these shards and bits of the video as well i really would love for people to have an experience in the space where uh, they kind of see this kind of the multiples of a perspective. Everyone is very complicated and complex and has these amazing relationships. So the space creates a place where you can approach the same thing from multiple points of view. I like to use images in pop culture because it's what we face every day. We as humans are such visual creatures and we mediate through the world through image. And the way that we experience how life might be elsewhere, somewhere that we've never visited, perhaps 
what is the world like in Iran or in the Middle East? It's told to us through these narratives, through images. And so this is why I think that it's important to weave that back in to my work for me so that I can remind myself about how much is kind of constructed in this world. Art is incredibly important. No matter how it's formed, what shape it takes, um, making art is bringing something to the world. So whether it's abstract and you just make a mark on the wall, a single line is a process of giving. You know, it's not really consuming. And so that's why I really love making work because it allows spaces for conversation, creates forms for exchange. Um, so that video definitely touched on the benefits of our activism and how experiences, space, and perspective work together to facilitate action. Um, so I guess let's just take a, um, a little deeper look into the question of why our activism, um, specifically why would we choose our activism over any other form of activism? So to explain this, let's kind of just revisit its definition. Um, according to the Center for Artistic Activism, um, art activism is a dynamic practice that combines the creative power of the arts to move others emotionally um, with the strategic planning of activism necessary to bring about social change. Um, so essentially beyond conventional forms of activism, art activism is a unique and accessible way to reach a diverse audience. Um, not only does it bridge the cultural gap between many communities, but it also evokes a shared sense of meaning and emotion that's um, really unparalleled by any form of conventional form um, of activism. And beyond this, um, artistic activism is surprising. Often it shows up in unlikely places, for example, like not a gallery or takes on unfamiliar forms, um, like not a protest or march. And this provides an opportunity to disrupt people's preconceived notions of art and protest and their predetermined ideas about the messages that we're trying to communicate. Um, ultimately, that creative innovation that drives artistic activism is something really uncommon. Um, and out of place and that can actually attract attention and really makes the art activism more memorable in a unique way that um, unconventional forms or sorry conventional forms simply can't and to demonstrate this and why our activism is preferred by many as a tool to facilitate community-wide change here's a short video from the alliance for climate education that demonstrates the importance and power of art activism especially um, as it relates to youth <laughs> My name is Yamila Salgado, and I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I first learned about climate change in middle school, and it was almost like an epiphany for me to realize that there were so many little things that I was doing and that people surrounding me were doing that contributed to climate change. It's extremely frustrating that adults can say like, oh, young people, you don't know anything. You're, you know, you guys got to sit down and we'll deal with all this stuff. But really, we're the ones that want to make the change. We're the ones that are bringing attention to it and awareness to it. I've been using art and activism as a way to bring awareness towards climate change in my community. 
I've created many murals to which I can display things that have been going on specifically either in Milwaukee or in my community. So that's something that I've been doing with climate change is bringing the awareness to it with my art. And it's important for me to do that because a lot of people don't understand climate change in one way. They have to see it in many different ways. So I feel like I'm using art as a way to send that message. Art and activism is definitely an avenue for others. You don't have to be an artist to do activism art. You can definitely join clubs within your school or create your own club, really, and instill that passion that you want to do this in order to bring awareness towards it. Young people are going to be the ones to really see the damages that climate change is going to cause. The fact that we have this burden and all this weight on top of us, it makes it an even stronger impact for youth to be a part of it. You don't have to be a specific age to make a change. Age means nothing when it comes to change. Okay, so I really like that video because I think the points that a lot of people see activism in different ways is important to note and that you don't have to be an artist to take part in art activism. And so that's something that we'll get to. But now that we have a better understanding on what art activism entails, how does equity play in? And why is equity important in activism? And how does that show up through art? So equity in art activism is important because it allows for a more accessible form of moving and creating. Art activism plays to the strengths of those who are marginalized. It gives people a voice who may not have the platform already. It shows up in ways such as using recycled materials and being able to create something out of objects that already exist. It allows for the creative to take over despite the emphasis on specific statistical knowledge. It's age inclusive. And so anyone can use their imaginations and their passions to build something that visually represents how they feel and what they stand for. Like she said in the video, age doesn't matter when it comes to change. So these are just a few ways that equity plays a role within art activism. It's important to work to maintain equitable practices in the field of activism. So the World Resources Institute states that their vision for climate equity re reaching to enhance the capability enhance the capabilities that are necessary to drive long-term transformations. So this is primarily the goal of all forms of activism to make long-lasting meaningful change. So now that we know that, we know the advantages of our activism and the importance of incorporating equity into these efforts, um, let's dive a little deeper into the forms of our activism. So as you can see, we've identified three forms of art activism, those being physical art, documentary, film, and photography, and storytelling and literature. While we have identified these categories, it's definitely possible that there are other forms of art activism that exist that we just didn't mention. Um, that being said, art is always evolving and may not conform to the expectations. So for the purposes of this presentation, we'll use these three aforementioned categories as a guide to introduce you to the various forms of art activism, um, beginning with physical art. So physical art can entail a wide variety of things. It's visual and aesthetic presence as something you can feel or touch helps to connect the viewers thoughts and ideas to something tangible. This can be a powerful tool within the sphere of art activism because sometimes that physical element is what's missing when it comes to rallying for a cause. Specifically one with like climate change where understanding things you might not be able to see right away plays a large role. So Ice Watch, a sculptural presentation by artist Oliver Eliaison and geologist Minnick Rosing was displayed outside of Tate Modern in London 2018 and in Paris during the United Nations Climate Change Conference. So he had used these large blocks of glacial ice and placed them in a circle in a very public place. Keeping in mind the idea of equity, using a location to display the work that anyone can come to without having to pay, gave a larger number of people the opportunity to view and interact with the work. You could walk around them, touch them, and visually see them melt as the days went on. He did this to raise awareness of climate change by providing a direct and physical experience of the reality of melting Arctic ice. So not only did this allow for the topic to be brought up in conversations, but you were made to witness the effects firsthand. 
Physical art can have a large impact on those who need to see it to believe it. Then on the next slide, I'll show a short clip of the work. Today we're looking at this amazing ice from Greenland and I think it's so beautiful and I think one of the reasons why it's worth taking all the way from Greenland to Paris is that it shows us what they talked about at the COP21 is actually real. It's not something abstract, it's not scientific data, it's not just what the politicians or the heads of states are talking about, it's actually something you can touch. Nature can create beauty much greater than any piece of art. And this is what you see just around us here. Go and put your ear towards the ice, and you will hear that you can tell a story from ancient times. These icebergs fell as snow 10,000 years ago, and they still remember a time before humans had added carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. They added a time where you had a completely different world. This is actually ice that fell from a glacier in Greenland into the ocean where we picked it up and shipped it here to Paris. And as you can see, it's really touching to look at. It's really beautiful and it's incredibly magic. And the project is very much about, well, what on earth are the scientists and the heads of states talking about at the COP21? What does it look like? What does climate change actually physically feel like? And then they put their hand on it and said, oh, it's really cold. Interestingly, they kind of knew that it's ice is cold, but you know, feeling the cold on your hand and knowing that ice is cold is actually two different things. So this project is really about connecting what we know with what we are. So similar to physical art, documentary, film, and photography are incredibly important forms of our activism. Um, they rely on visuals to motivate observers to enact change. And while photography relies on single shot visuals, documentaries and film pull together a culmination of shots, angles, and scenes that work together to advance the overarching mission. Um, in terms of art activism, documentary, film, and photography tend to address social issues in a captivating way. They work to change minds, change behaviors, and build communities while also changing existing societal structures. In doing so, they encourage action while also boosting accessibility and reach. And in terms of equity, they typically lend a hand in addressing gaps in the movement and providing solutions to create more inclusive and equitable change. That, that being said, there are many examples of this form of our activism, but we've chosen to highlight Grizzlies of the North by Paul Nicklin, as seen on this slide. Nicklin is a photographer, filmmaker, and marine biologist who has documented the beauty of our planet for over 20 years. He's collaborated with scientists, filmmakers, and conservationists to create awareness and inspire action for global issues like climate change through his work. In Grizzly specifically, Nicklin effectively connects viewers to the subject matter of the art while also calling attention to the vulnerability and intricacies of the species. In this case, the pure power and vulnerability of a bear catching the salmon. And although we've chosen one shot in this series, Grizzly is actually comprises of nine total shots that work to facilitate Nicklin's overarching mission. And to further demonstrate the power of documentary film and photography as mediums of art activism, um, I want to take a few minutes to watch the following video, which outlines Human Rights Watch's ongoing art and activism initiative. Um, this initiative supports the work of the organization by engaging with artists, curators, cultural icons, and galleries, and in utilizing creative mediums for the human rights movement, um, they move towards a more equitable future where everyone's voice is heard.
Art, because it illuminates imagination, it's a magic wand. It's a power. It's the things which emotionally get to you, which change you, and where photography really has an enormous effect. I was in the forest, I mean, after a wildfire. I see this scar, and this is, of course, a symbol of what, what humankind are, what we are doing to the wilderness. I just felt in my body, I, I have to do something. <laughs> Art has always been changing the world. You know, when you strip race away, you know, we're talking about a mother losing her son for no reason. That makes it a connecting point where people can understand it on a deeper level. Women in many countries still don't have the rights that um, it's not equal rights. And we wanted to give voice to young migrant women. It's not one of those situations where you know that everything is going to be fine. We are the people and we have to make this world better. And it's us. By being able to touch people, they can really, as artists, instigate that change, instigate that motivation to start to maybe find your own power. Okay, so um, beyond the mentioned mediums, storytelling and literature play an important role within the art activism movement. It allows for people across all ages to use their personal experiences to influence and empower others. So words have a heavy impact, and when you use them to bring light to the ways in which you connect and feel passionate about a social cause, it gives other people the opportunity to do the same. Storytelling is something everyone can participate in. Everyone comes from somewhere and has their own memories and experiences that they can tell about the things that they've influenced them. All you need is your voice. So All We Can Save is an anthology of writings by 60 women who are at the forefront of the climate movement. They harness truth, courage, and solutions that lead humanity forward. Each section is comprised of different voices and stories ranging from botany to poetry and so much more. It can be difficult to find exactly where you fit in within the climate movement, but this book of short essays allows for you to experience the ways in which 60 different women with completely different niches can come together to fight for a common cause. In conjunctions with the book, the All You Can Save project was created. Its purpose is to grow the feminist climate leadership across all genders and support those who are lighting the way to a just and livable future. So their goal is that by 2030, the woman, um, which they emphasize is an open and expansive term that is trans inclusive, will hold the power to create transformational change and at the same time will experience deep joy in their work. They hope to do this through curating and collaboratively producing interdisciplinary events from seminars to poetry readings, working on creating and supporting gatherings to strengthen the relationships of women that are part of the movement and mentoring sessions to foster intergenerational wisdom and experience. So here's an excerpt from a poem by Jane Hirschfield from All You Can Save. So on the fifth day, the scientists who studied the rivers were forbidden to speak or to study the rivers. The scientists who studied the air were told not to speak of the air, and the ones who worked for the farmers were silenced, and the ones who worked for the bees. Someone from deep in the bed badlands began posting facts. These facts were told not to speak and were taken away. The facts, surprised to be taken, were silent. Now it was only the rivers that spoke of the rivers and only the wind that spoke of its bees, while the unpausing factual buds of the fruit trees continued to move towards their fruit. 
The silence spoke loudly of silence and the rivers kept speaking of rivers, of boulders and air. In gravity, earless and tongueless, the untested rivers kept speaking. Bus drivers, self-stalkers, code writers, machinists, accountants, lab techs, and cellists kept speaking. They spoke the fifth day of silence. And so now I'm gonna pass it on to Kim to introduce our next example. Thanks, Maddie. Um, so based on all those examples, especially that poem, it's clear that there are many forms of our activism with various purposes, different methods of delivery and diverse impacts. Um, so now we'd like to talk a little bit more about our own experience with our activism and our climate. For years, our climate has worked to mobilize our youth to advocate for bold, equitable climate policy. And one way that we've done this is by spearheading statewide mosaic projects. As newly onboarded fellows, we knew that this is what that this was what we wanted to do to pursue a project like this um, that generated community-wide momentum and impact. Um, so that's exactly what our Florida team did. And we ended up basing ours off of this really great um, mosaic that they did in Massachusetts. So here's a short video that gives an overview of that Massachusetts mosaic. So the Our Climate Mosaic in the case of Florida was a, collab a collaborative project, um, but it was primarily spearheaded by Maddie. I helped in various avenues, but it was Maddie who worked very hard to facilitate this project from ideation to the finished project. Um, to guide us through this conversation, we've identified three overarching elements that we had to consider throughout this project, um, those specifically being accessibility, problem solving, outreach, and project management. So now I'll pass it off to Maddie to talk a little bit more about each of these and how they were addressed um, throughout the project's timeline. So Accessibility. Um, this started about six months out when we had began planning. Um, one of the most important aspects of the mosaic that we had to consider from the very start were the ways in which it could be accessible. So some ways that we implemented this was through the distribution of recycled materials, providing drop off sites and coordinating with community organizers across the state. By providing materials and having organizers throughout Florida, we were able to participate and expand our range of participation and have someone connected within the area to deliver materials and pick up tiles. We provided participants with a toolkit, which included all the information that they would need to successfully participate in the project. The toolkit was digital and we were able to send it out in order to reach as many people as possible. It had things such as the timeline, how to host your own tile making parties, contacts for different community organizers, why we were doing what we were doing, and the impacts that tied in manatee conservation with the mosaic and art activism. So about four months out, 
we had an influx of emails and those who wanted to get involved. Due to the large response we were getting and the desire to reach as many people as possible, we realized that it was time to expand our team and transition our tactics from backwards planning to active responding. To do this, we had decided to recruit our field representatives and other fellows from around the state to help with outreach, material distribution, and tile collection. This helped to boost efficiency and gave the administration team the ability to delegate and work on planning the next steps of our action plan. It also allowed for other members of our climate to spearhead projects in their regions and get a better understanding of field organization. So as things started to come to a head, outreach and project management were at the forefront of this project. About two months out, as the new year rang in, we hosted bi-weekly mosaic lead meetings to check in with our organizers and provide them with any support that they might need. It gave everyone a chance to talk and bring up what has or hadn't been working, delegate responsibilities or help each other out. Um, and also just to find ways that we can push outreach as much as possible. We utilized Slack to maintain open lines of communication between team members. And we even hosted a competition to boost morale and yield higher results. So the final results. Um, eventually we reached build day, which was March 10th. And the Tallahassee field team came together and assembled the mosaic on the steps of the Florida Capitol. We chose March 10th because it coincided with Reclaiming Florida's Future, a statewide lobby day, and had successfully gained attention from legislators and media. But due to the wind and other circumstances, we weren't able to keep it up for as long as that we had hoped. Um, we had a decently large number of legislators that took interest in our build and wanted to speak with us about the project. It ended up being being a great way to demonstrate the urgency of the climate crisis and our desire to advance bold and equitable climate policy in Florida. Overall, we had a great response and this is something that we hope to continue to build on and bring, bring that awareness. So here's another short video on another view of our activism and the impact that it has on society. Juliet and I go to Ottawa County School for the Arts. Here we are surrounded by artists who get to share the pleasure of going to a school specifically designed for people to explore their freedom through expression and creativity. Through our art education, our art is able to reach to our entire community. That is the same intentions of protest art. And so today I want to ask, ask the question, how effective is protest art in creating social change? First, we have to understand what protest art really is. It is essentially art created with the intent to protest one part of society or the status quo, asking for reformation through forms of expression. Why does it matter? It is so important that we understand what protest art is, especially if we are artists and we want to use our art for activism. So we want to explore this question today and see exactly how and what we can do to make our protest art more effective so that it branches out and reaches more parts of society and create, creates the most maximum amount of change that is possible. First, we have to look at two different perspectives on this issue to fully understand and put them together to create a solution about how we can create the most effective protest art. The first perspective is that protest art does directly create change. And the second perspective is that change is created through direct action rather than protest art. We have to put these two perspectives together, like I said, so that we can come up with solutions so that protest artists can have the most effective art. The first argument in that first perspective that protest art does create change is that art influences emotion. So we can see through some uh, scientific studies, it, one in the psychological bulletin, that general acoustic cues contribute to the emotional effectiveness of music. And the second from brain and cognition, that aesthetic perception activated brain insula, which we attribute to the experience of emotion. These two different studies, one studying music and the other one aesthetics, 
both come together and we can see exactly how art does in fact influence our emotion. And then we can see exactly how this emotion translates into social change. The Sociological Forum says that emotions accompany all social actions, providing both motivation and goals. Social movements are affected by transitory, context-specific emotions, usually reactions to information and events. These information and events is exactly what this protest art is, and it is exactly how protest artists can, can infiltrate people's emotions, get into their hearts, and then have them go out and create the change that these people are protesting against. Second argument. Okay, so I just wanted to show the first parts of that video. Um, I think she does a very good job in explaining that art influences emotion and that that can then influence social change. So I highly suggest you watch the rest of it. Um, we will put it in our resource document, but sort of tying that back into the mosaic, I think the art that we did, the art that the younger um, students and children did, and yet the art that you know our parents and their generation did, it all comes from these different emotional places. And I think that that can then um, push others to make change. So from there, we are going to move on. So just like Maddie said, um, our activism is a great way to enact social change. And there are so many ways to participate in our activism. We want to help you guide yourselves in doing so. So in our last few minutes, let's review some steps for you to take to learn more about our activism and how to get involved. So primarily, the Center for Our Activism is a great tool. Um, we've utilized their website as a resource for this presentation, and we highly recommend using it yourself. Um, the organization helps activists artists, organizations, and foundations be more effective and effective in bringing about social change by providing trainings, podcasts, and other resources. So um, definitely utilize that to your advantage. And then beyond the Center for Art Activism, we've compiled a brief list of our favorite resources, including books, movies, and podcasts. And for your convenience, you can scan the QR code in the right top hand corner above to view a more comprehensive list of resources, including descriptions and methods of accessing each one. Um, on this document, you can also find a list of the resources that we utilize to create this presentation. And, and that will also include a complete list of all the works that we mentioned as well. So there are plenty of ways to get involved with our climate and take part in projects like the Mosaic, such as becoming a field representative. This is a one to two hour commitment per week to get involved and support any upcoming projects. You can also apply to become a fellow, which is about a seven to 10 hour commitment per week and dedicates a large chunk of leading, of leading said projects, as well as being present in coalitions around the state. We also have a Facebook action team to stay updated on important meetings and action items that you can take part in. To conclude, our activism is a unique and accessible way to reach a diverse audience. It bridges the gap between many communities, it evokes a shared sense of meaning and emotion, and it's unparalleled by any form of, of conventional form of activism. Um, we've loved the opportunity to advance climate action through art, and we encourage you to take every opportunity to do the same. Um, I'd like to thank you for attending this presentation, and now I'll pass it to Maddie for her final thoughts. So I just want to leave you with a quote by Ai Weiwei. If anything, art is about morals, about our belief in humanity. Without that, there is no art. Thank you so much for coming and listening to us, and I hope that you take this and find yourself doing some art activism.